You're welcome back to the market, please. Now, the Eastern Railway Line project is set to take off soon as the Ministry Chief of Railways Development begins negotiations with the contractor, the Ghana European Railway Consortium. The rail line, which will operate both passenger and freight services, is expected to, uh, is expected to cost $2.2 billion. Minister for Railways Development, Joe Dugate, says the project will be a build, operate and transfer based. The 350-kilometer railway line will run from Tema through Accra to Kuforidia and terminate in Kumasi. The project will be undertaken by the Ghana European Consortium under a build, operate and transfer agreement. Speaking to Joint Business, the Minister for Railway Development, Joe Gatti, said the contract is expected to be submitted to Parliament in July. So we are going into a meeting and I'm going to tell them my deadline. I want the finished document so I can take it to Cabinet. Um, very soon, then we can take it to Parliament before it rises in, in July. Talk, and this model it doesn't add. To, I mean, as they told you, the value of the whole thing is 2.2 billion dollars. Is our country prepared for 2.2 billion dollars debt at this time? I don't think so. You know this debt, uh, debt uh, GDP ratio. You can't <laughs> be borrowing ad infinitum. And so, I mean, if you can use other models. In order to develop, it's fine. The total cost of the project is estimated at $2.2 billion. According to spokesperson for the consortium, Hans Krizek, the project will include a rail line, electrification and stations. Of the total investment is scheduled or calculated for $2.2 billion US dollar. This uh, includes the entire construction of the double line trek, Tema Port, Accra, Kumasi. Right now we are discussing the possibility of electrification, as I said. Without the electrification, it comes to 1.9 billion. So the difference, we are now trying to get additional funding from uh, bilateral banking institutions and also uh, support from the German government. The, the actual figures which were given to us by the Ministry of Railways Development as a basis for developing our concept were 15 to 18,000 passengers a day. And this amounts to 34 trains in both directions daily. And the, uh, the amount of uh, freight is another 16 trains. But this depends on the, on the amount of the natural resources and the minerals which has to be transported. Joe Gatti also indicated governments will hold about 30% shares in the project. This is a concession agreement. What it means is that the concessionaire will own in quotes the line for a certain number of years before they hand it over back to us. Uh, government is going to also take a percentage of the shares. Government is not going to give the 100%. We are thinking more of 30% of the shares. We don't want to be the majority shareholder. 30% of the shares to guarantee the people's... Uh, so we are in there. Guarantee, uh, national guarantee for the people. For Joy Business, Sheila Tamaklu. Telecom's giant MTN Ghana has indicated it would focus heavily on data to help grow and sustain the profits it, maintained, it made last year. MTN in 2018 recorded a profit before tax of 1 billion CDs. This was driven mainly to growth in data mobile money business last year. Chief Executive of the MTN, uh, Selom Adadivo, tells Joy Business he's hopeful this strategy would improve shareholders' returns for the year. In growth pillars, um, in our business that, that's, that supported last year's performance. The voice business, data, digital in general, which includes mobile money. So these are the three areas that we saw the growth in. And I would say our focus over the next two to three years is really on, ex on continue to expand data, which is one of the reasons we're doing 4G+, plus, as well as mobile money, which will be a more significant contributor to our total revenue over the next coming years. What is the dividend policy? I mean, if you look at the nominal numbers, they are quite huge, uh, but growth, some will see that as a marginal growth. Were you satisfied with what you posted last year in terms of real growth in the, in the, in the, in the bottom line? Absolutely. I think last year was a good year for us, um, but as business people, we always want to do more. Our customers have demands, our customer behavior is evolving, our needs are evolving, and our goal is to continue to serve these needs with the technologies that we have and to expand the services that we have to meet the consumer needs. We really want to delight our customers and take them on this digital journey, and that's what we're doing, what we're doing. Is the outlook good in terms of, again, assuring customers of some uh, good earnings going forward, looking at what you've posted last year? 
I think we have to rely on what we posted last year to give customers confidence. I think our customers should be very confident about their investments, especially our shareholders. And we'll continue to do what we're doing, investing. We're investing significantly this year to expand our network, $155 million. Part of this is to 4G plus services. And again, to ensure that our customers get the best technology for the best services. And with that, we'll continue to grow. How is the environment again impacted on the end? And so that some will see that the expectation is that things are going to pick up strongly going into this year and even next year as well. Uh, you think that more disposable income could impact on purchases and all those things? It's a very difficult question. Um, we all know this is the first quarter. There's a lot of seasonality in the first quarter. We hope that things would improve generally in the economy and we're supportive of any initiative that we can contribute to to support this. Competition is getting tighter and tighter and that has seen you introduce some of these services as well. Uh, do you think that competition again could impact on the numbers? Competition is a constant and Ghana is a tough market in general. We just have to keep our strategy and keep executing. What's your final word to shareholders who have seen certain blips on the market currently and they are quite worried about the future of their investment in MTN? Sure. I'm not sure sh shareholders are actually worried about their future in their in their, in I'm their a shareholders. In, in, in I'm MTN. worried about the numbers I'm seeing. Sure, you shouldn't be at all. Um, look at the business performance and let's separate that from the trading activity on the stock exchange. But stay, stay, stay vigilant and I'm quite sure you'd see all your investments continue to, ma continue to materialize. Um, short term movements are very different from long term expectations and we need to keep that in mind as a shareholder. And you think that it doesn't reflect the fundamentals of the company? Not at all. And, you, and you'd see that from our results in 2018. Not at all. Let's now move on to one of our top stories today. The local currency recorded one of its strongest recovery this week, especially on Thursday on the interbank market. It went up from 5 cities 35 pesos to close on Thursday at 5 cities 17 pesos. The city is set to be trading this afternoon at around 5 cities. The, uh, this could be, this be an indication that the challenging times with the city are over. Let's cross over now to George Riafi, uh, who updates us on this current development. George, good afternoon. Welcome to the marketplace. might not be demanding more dollars as we're depending or demanding previously. And that is why we've seen some uh, first stability on the market. As just as yesterday, we recorded one of our strongest recovery on the market in terms of based on the transaction rate that majority of the commercial banks were offering to businesses and moving from five Ghana to the 35 pesos to five Ghana to the 17 pesos. It looks like sentiment are slowing down and in terms of real demand for the foreign currency slowed down. That is why we've seen that marginal stuff. Of these uh, traders or businesses who are driving the depreciation appear to be. All right, so, George, should we be happy the that the challenges the that the city has encountered persistently is now over or, or the, the trend is reversing? That is why we've seen some uh, first stability on the market. As yesterday, yesterday we recorded or more, let's say, early days yet, we want to say that. Because of what it was the past four days, the challenge is over. I think we should watch the market closely and see whether the trend will be sustained at least two weeks. Then we can say that the place that we saw on the market is over. Five days, make a judgment is over. I'm sorry, Rafi, it's too early for us. All right. So could you give us the outlook for the, say, the next three months? If you want to look at the Bank of Ghana, that, if you want to look at the fact that the senior minister even spoke about the fact that uh, come the middle of this month, we'll be going out onto the market and enforcing the forex route where they're going to get heavy on the black market operators. That would have an impact on demand. And you, people are saying that if you really look at the demand on the market, look at people's bank accounts, forex accounts, over $4 billion, those actions would help deal with people who don't need the dollars that are going out for it. So we, we should expect some uh, first stability on the market, but that's in the strong recovery. It's a little easier to have All right, many thanks for your time, George. We have my colleague there bringing us up to speed with the current situation 
on the market where the CD seems to be appreciating in value against the dollar. It's actually going for five cities as we speak now. Now, moving on, former CEO of GNPC, Alex Mould, says the way forward for an efficient energy sector is to ensure energy organizations run effectively devoid of politics. He was speaking on the business edition of PM Express on Joy News last night. Alex Mould believes the institutions in the energy sector should be run by competent teams as this will boost their credibility when seeking international financial assistance. Energy is a financial play. Okay, if you want to be in the energy industry, you have to ensure that you have your financial institutions that are backing you. That is absolutely important. To do that, it means that you have to get your shop in shape. You have to make sure that your balance sheet is good and also your income statement is good. That means that you are making profits. Otherwise, they're not going to support you and they will need some sort of guarantee from your parents, which is the government of Ghana. Mm -hmm. That currency, government of Ghana doesn't have to be guaranteeing everybody. It affects their borrowing, it affects their euro bonds, it affects all of these things. So Ghana government doesn't have guarantees to be guaranteeing. Ghana government should wake up because it's running a business and it has these corporations, ECG, GMPC, Ghana Gas, all of these corporations should be firing on all cylinders. They should be efficient, lean machines not just putting a lot of people there who have no competence to do the work. They have to make sure that they have the right people there, that they have the right strategy, they have the right organization, they have the right board, and they have the right management team to make these things work. This makes financial institutions very happy okay. that you have people who can run the sector, people who understand that they, they cannot you know, uh, miss payments, they cannot renege on agreements, which is normal in, 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 in the public sector, in, even in government. They don't pay road contractors, they don't pay fuel bill subsidies, all of that. And all of this has to stop. So we have to make sure that we have an astute financial management in all of these areas. And we stop the politics in these areas. Let's now turn our attention to the agri sector. Now, the Minister for Food and Agriculture says is hopeful of seeing some foreign direct investments coming into the agri sector following a meeting with the former British Prime Minister Tony Blair. The former Prime Minister yesterday paid a courtesy call on the Minister uh, to look at possible areas his foundation can support government to develop the country. Speaking to Joy Business, the Minister of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Awusue Fiyakutu, said he is optimistic the meeting will yield positive results. The meeting was a follow-up to two previous meetings in Kigali and London over the last six months. The former British Prime Minister Tony Blair lauded government's flagship agri program, the Planting for Food and Jobs Initiative, and other interventions. Speaking to Joy Business after the discussions, the Minister for Food and Agriculture, Dr. Efri Akutu, said he's optimistic the meeting will help attract some foreign direct investments. Uh, the discussions have been very productive. Um, he has the capacity and his foundation to assist us to attract foreign direct investment into agriculture in Ghana. In fact, he has a country representative who sat in the meeting uh, with us. And as a follow-up, this country representative of the Blair Foundation is going to come here with his team to meet my team of technical experts. Can I have some water, please? Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, it's been a very productive meeting, I must say. Um, and I'm very confident that very soon uh, we are going to have, see the, the, the benefits of this. On his part, the former British Prime Minister said he was impressed with government's efforts so far and remains hopeful the collaboration between the foundation and government will help contribute to the nation's economic development. Um, my institute uh, is a partnership here with the, with the government where we work on trying to help uh, the government with its program for development of the country and its um, in, it, in its economic progress, um, and we'd just be discussing how we might do that. Uh, you know how the advisors that work for me can help uh, the minister in. For Joy Business, Sheila Tamaklu. So in agriculture, the CEO of the Ghana Commodity Exchange, Dr. Kadri Alpha, has revealed that cocoa could soon be trading on the Ghana Commodity Exchange. He told Joy Business that they will soon be engaging the cocoa board on how to implement the trade. The Commodity Exchange was established in November 2018 with the key aim of linking farmers and agricultural commodity producers to markets. Dr. Kadri Alpha tells Joy Business trade on the exchange has been active so far. 
Well, we've made a huge progress uh, in terms of, you know, supporting the farmers that the exchange was, uh, was lying to support. Um, so the farmers have been bringing their commodities to us. They are getting good prices uh, as compared to what they'll get uh, probably in the open market or in the, at the farm gates. So a lot of progress has been made. Well, the, the volumes, uh, we have to, we have to all know that um, this is not a, a seller's market, basically, or this is not a, a, a time for them to buy. But at least we have probably sold about 20,000 uh, mini bags of farmer's maize uh, this time, and we're building on that. And currently, we have a lot of stock in the warehouse uh, that we are intending to, to trade. He was speaking at a workshop for the development of the Ghana Community Exchange 10-year development plan. Dr. Alpha said in the future the exchange was going to venture into trading in other crops, including cocoa. Um, with regards to cocoa, this, this involves a lot of policy uh, negotiations and, and, and policy. Uh, you know, we need to talk. Um, we have um, the way that we can make contribution to the, the current way that uh, cocoa is being uh, sold and, and exported. Um, we are very determined to, to work with all the the agencies involved to see if it's possible that we can make a contribution. So this is currently our position. For Joy Business, Sheila Tamaklu. This is live on the marketplace. Now time to get to the stock market uh, to see how the Ghana Stock Exchange has fared over the week, especially with respect to the Ghana CD, the commodities and other developments on the stock market. I've been joined in the studio by Beta Atubiga, who is a researcher from Gold Coast, to help us with the review. Beta, you're welcome. Thank you very now, much, Imani. it looks like the city's woes has begun turning around. We've seen some stability this mm -hmm. week, especially yesterday, when it dropped you know, to 5.2, uh, thereabouts. We've been told by my colleague I George early, earlier on that you know, um, it's now about five cities on the market. Okay. Can you tell us what is actually happening on the Well, um, on Thursday, we saw the dollar actually depreciating or lost about 0.20% uh, to the CD. Mm. And then today we saw it going up. Early hours of today, we saw it go. The dollar de decreased again by 1.06% to the mm -hmm. CD. That should tell you that the CD is gaining some weight to the dollar. Now, what we should also know is that uh, the CD was not... Um, Table, or let's say we had these depreciations going on because of the IMF bailout that the government actually had to build up its reserve, okay, to be able to meet the requirements for the bailout. Which so that, was that's done. exactly what uh, the, the exactly. vice president told us. Yes, so that is what actually, and there's no way they could have intervened. That's the Bank of Ghana, that's what they've actually, there's no way they could have intervened, okay, mm -hmm. at that time that the CD was um, experiencing much depreciations on the interbank market. Mm -hmm. Now, you realize that the city has lost about 16% uh, in a year to the dollar. And if you want to look at the year-to-day depreciation, which is about 5.7% to the dollar, that's the city's depreciation to the dollar. Now, before I even talk about how the other currencies are performing against the city, uh, one thing that we need to consider as a country, and George, you, uh, Ima, you know, one um, in July 2007, mm. the CD was trading at 90 pesos to one dollar, and I'll be, I'm sure a lot of people will be glad to see that happen again. And um, one thing that I actually said that there's one thing that we can do. The market has a lot of forex bureaus. We have a lot of forex bureaus. We have a lot of people on the black market that are exchanging okay. dollars and all that. And we know one major factor is speculation. Speculation okay. tends to affect the performance of the CD a lot. Mm. So if measures are being put in place to regulate these forex bureaus and then the free market that we have, then we'll be able to help actually uh, reduce these depreciations that we usually have on the interbank market and even on the currency market. So Bank of Ghana, the central bank, needs to put in measures to mm. monitor. And you know, some countries, you can only get foreign currencies from the banks. But in Ghana, you can get it anywhere. And once the forex bureaus, the people on the black market are speculating and saying that the, mm. there's going to be a shortage of dollar, you All see right. the rush for dollars. So that could be done. And just to add on, uh, the CD has uh, lost 7.17% to the pound and 3.41% to the euro. All right, let, let's go to how the stocks also fared uh, over the week. 
what are okay. going to happen? Um, this week, especially, we haven't seen much trade, but by close of yesterday's trade, we saw quite a significant number of shares trading on the market. I just want to tackle a bit about the quarter, hmm. how the Ghana Stock Exchange performed, especially in Africa. It was one of the worst performing markets in Africa. Oh. And, uh, for the first quarter? Of, for the first the quarter of hmm. this year. Hmm. And uh, that's not to say it's only the Ghana Stock Exchange. We have other markets also recording negative yields. Okay. But one reason, we have some impact of the CD. Let me put it that way because we have about 78% of foreign investors. Take um, away their... Exactly. Okay. You know, most of them decided that they were not going to roll back their maturing bills. They were holding okay. domestic debts in Ghana. So they were not going to hold back those um, debts anymore because they were uncertain about what was going to happen considering the fact that we have ended this bailout with IMF okay. mm. and then um, some with what is also happening in the economy. So some of these things affected uh, the market. And I mentioned last week that we didn't see significant trades in the last week, but most of the trades that we had in the first two months of the year were done by these foreign investors. And that's being confirmed by the CSD, the Central Securities Depository. Now, this, uh, by close of yesterday's trading session, we had a significant number of shares trading on the exchange. Over 1.2 million shares were traded at uh, 2,769,639 Ghana cities. Eight equities participated in trade, and we had only Enterprise Group Limited going up okay. on its opening share price. It showed up by 0.9% to close at two cities, 24 pesos per share. Gold recorded the highest volumes of shares trading on the exchange, trading 569,491 shares, followed by MTN, who traded 501,100 shares. Ecobank traded 122,800 shares, and ETI, 23,810 equities. Now, very good. So quickly, what's the outlook for next week? Uh, when we, well, we are not price. expecting trades to be very significant. If you're going to see block trades, that means that we're going to see some more exits by foreign investors. Uh, we are not expecting anything substantial, but we could see some trades going on. And last week I mentioned that we expect MTN to continue to trade, so Chite General to also continue to be very active on the mm. stock market. City yeah. could enter the four, four Ghana cities zone? This week? Next week. Next week? Yeah. I'm not sure. All right. Many thanks for your time. Beta Atubiga is a research analyst from Gold Coast, ending this afternoon's edition of the market. Please, many thanks for your company throughout the week. My name is Imano Abuaji. We are free. Let's meet again on Monday for more developments in the world of business. Have a great weekend.